Hydration is important for health. What's up, everybody? I'm back. I know, it's been a while. I... Oh, how life likes to get in the way of me doing the things I like. So, as I'm sure some of you may have probably guessed, and probably guessed what reason for, I've been busy for a while. I've had to deal with a lot of stuff going on. Uh, there was some stuff going on, actually, in the background of other things that kinda has taken up a bit of my attention and it's not really been great like make no mistake i've been wanting to make some content for you guys and actually make more videos but the amount of times i had something just come up that gets in the way or i don't have time to do anything that day it really just it get it's so annoying i really wish i could be doing more content honestly hopefully soon i will be able to do more content i am going to try and make a lot more content soon I just don't like it when I, like, I can't make content and it's just nothing. Like, there's nothing that I can do about it. But, as you can see, it's more Yu-Gi-Oh! And there's actually a reason I waited so long to come back to Yu-Gi-Oh! So first off was, a lot of my decks, because most of my content is deck profiles, have kinda been eh, iffy at best. Like, I haven't really enjoyed the way they worked. I was also kind of waiting for this ban list to come out because the previous ban list had some changes that I didn't really get and was kind of nervous about. One of those being e-teleport at two, but that's at three now, so I guess that doesn't matter. Uh, but this new ban list is a bit weirder because Regeki's at three and Skill Drain is at three. Like, Konami hears our complaints about Floodgates, but have we heard of Skill Drain? So yeah, this ban list is going to be kind of weird. Fusion Destiny is thankfully though semi-limited, so that's a good thing. Konami is kind of like thinking with their heads in some aspects. I did also want to wait and see how Master Duel turned out and see if I really wanted to continue with the game after that. Because if Master Duel was going to be like people thought it was going to, where it was like a pay-to-play thing, I was kind of going to be really disappointed and want to just take a bit of a break. But Master Duel is actually pretty interesting, honestly. Like, you do have to use, like, currency to get some packs, but thankfully you can actually build up that currency really easily, and it isn't really all that difficult to actually get the cards you need. But enough about Master Duel, because I don't know if I'll be playing it on stream or on video or anything like that. Uh, I want to get back to a deck profile, because it's been a while since I've done one of those, and you guys should already be able to guess which one it is. Oh, it's your boy. It's your boy. So, as you can see, it's Stardust. And I know some people probably expected Blue Eyes when I said you can guess which one it is. But Blue Eyes and I have kind of not been as tight as we used to be. The reason for that mainly being that Blue Eyes, while it is still one of my favorite monsters in the game, it's kind of not really gotten decent support. And when I see decent support, I mean, it's not gotten that much support specifically directed at it. Like, don't get me wrong, there's been a couple cards. There's been a few cards. There's been True Light. There's been Eternal Rivals. There's going to be Blue Eyes Fusion and Blue Eyes Siren Dragon. So we're getting at least some support for them. However, Blue Eyes kind of falls into this problem of it doesn't get good support for itself. It either gets good generic dragon support, or it gets support that was kind of intended for Dark Magician and has a blue eyes effect just slapped on there at random. And with all the support that's come out, Stardust has just become a lot more efficient, a lot more fun to play. And I mean, I get to use my boy. I get to use my boy at full power, and I absolutely love it. So without further ado, let's just start this profile. So as you guys can see, it's a lot less assault mode than it used to be. It's definitely a lot less assault mode than it used to be. Like, I think my first profile in this build actually did have two Star Dragon assault mode, the three activate, two beasts, and three sentinel. You can tell that's no longer the case. Uh, the assault mode is much more cut down to simply an engine with mostly Stardust support and Synchron support put into the mix. And Honestly, I'm glad that we have actual decent Stardust support now. Like, I mean, yes, we had Starlight Road and Converging Wishes, but we're going to play a 10 that just those don't count for a while. So, yeah, let's just hop into this without further ado. So, you can see, of course, 
We've got the one Star Dust Strike and Assault Mode. For those of you that don't know what Assault Modes actually are, they're basically beefed up versions of Synchro Monsters. Uh, Stardust Dragon Assault Mode in particular has an extra 500 attack and defense from its normal counterpart, is a level 10, and all Assault Modes can only be special summoned with Assault Mode Activate or by their own effects. And when a Carter effect is activated while you have Stardust Assault Mode on the board, you can tribute it, negate the activation, destroy that card, and then during the end phase, if that whole chain was resolved effectively, you can re-special summon Assault Mode from your graveyard. But Assault Mode also has a destruction recovery effect where if it's destroyed, you get to recover Stardust Dragon from your graveyard, which I really like. That actually makes this card really viable, mainly for the sole fact that you get a 3,000 attack point Omni to gate, and if it happens to get destroyed, you have ways to recover out what you use to make it, meaning if you put it back in your deck, you have a chance to make it again. And then, of course, the one that makes that whole engine live, Cyberflector. This guy is basically a one synchro from any level from 6 to 9, just on his own. Like, any synchro monster from level 6 to 9, realistically, you can get with just Cyberflector. Not even kidding. If he's normal or special summoned, you can add Assault Mode Activate or anything that lists it, and it's taxed from your deck to your hand accept himself, and you can reveal one Assault Mode Activate to target one monster in your graveyard that mentions Assault Mode Activate, that can be Special Summoned, accept himself, and Special Summon it, and then you can increase his level from 1 to 4. And then of course we've got the combo support for Reflector, we've got the two, the, uh, the one Beast and two Sentinel, these guys basically work to either get out Reflector or get Assault Mode Activate into your hand. And also, we have the kind of nifty effect of Sentinel being a Reprodocus for Synchro Monsters. Yeah, not a lot of people actually realize this, but Assault Sentinel actually kind of is just really a Reprodocus. That he can make any monster you control the same type and attribute as any Synchro Monster in your extra deck. So if you were to have, say... Psyframe Lord Omega and Formula Synchron on board, and you needed a dragon type synchro monster, you could use Sentinel's effect to make Omega a synchro monster that's a dragon type. And then, for probably the best Stardust card ever, and quite possibly the best Synchron card ever, Stardust Synchron. I absolutely love this thing. This thing is amazing. So, why is Stardust Synchron so good? Well, it's a level 4 light machine, first off. Eh, that's clicking some gears in somebody's head. If it's in your hand or graveyard, you can tribute a monster to special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field, and you can only summon synchros for the rest of the turn. And if it's normal or special summon, you can add any spell or trap that specifically lists Stardust Dragon from your deck to your hand. That's a pretty good searcher, I'm not gonna lie, given that we have stuff like Illuminate, stuff like Arriving Miracle, and I mean, honestly, this thing is just an amazing tuner. Like, I've seen so many people run this just because it works with their engines. Like, it's a light machine. It works with ABC. It's a Synchron. It works in Synchron decks. And there's some Dragon decks where it's just like, okay, yeah, we'll throw in Stardust Synchron. He's easy to get on the field. And then, of course, for the additional Stardust support, we've got two Stardust Trail, a Wish Converging Dragon, and a Stardust Xiao Long. You guys know what Xiao Long does by this point. He just revives himself whenever Stardust is summoned. Trail, though, is the interesting one. Because if a monster is tributed, you can special summon it from the hand of graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. And if it's used for the synchro summon of a warrior, synchron, or Stardust synchro monster, it gives you a level 1 Stardust token, which is Dragon and Light. And you can just use that for anything. There's no restriction on it. It's just a free level 1 token. This thing is actually really good for a lot of reasons. Not only does it combo off of stuff like Assault Mode Activate or Stardust Dragon, but it also combos with Assault Sentinel, Stardust Synchron, and just generally overall a lot of cards in this deck that focus on tributing. This thing can bounce off of, and it works out really well. It's actually the reason why I still keep the Assault Mode engine in, just because that it works so well. Like, the fact that you contribute so much with this deck and have a card that benefits from that is really amazing. 
And then of course we have Wish Converging. It's basically just buffed up Majestic Dragon. So what it does is, same thing as Majestic Dragon, can't be used as Synchro Material except for a Majestic Monster. It becomes Majestic Dragon while on the field or Graveyard. That's important. And if you draw it, you can reveal it, special summon it, and then if you have, oh, I don't know, a level 8 or higher Dragon Synchro Monster on your field, you can special summon another level 1 Dragon from your deck. But you can only special summon it once per turn. This is actually funny because sometimes I'll have hands where I'll be able to normal summon this and not even have to worry about the special summon effect. And I can get two Majestic Monsters on board. And then for the generic support, we've got Omni Dragon Brotar, good level 1 Dragon, has the destruction effect to revive itself, is a searcher so it can search out Stardust Trail if we need it to, which most of the time actually you're going to be using that effect to search out Stardust Trail and get some plays live. We've got two Boost Warrior just because it's a generic level 1 that summons off of any tuner. Like, that can enable so many plays and so many decks. We've got Doppel Warrior because it is a free Synchro Token monster. Like, if you're running this thing, you're not going to run out of material for Synchro Monsters for a while. So, not only is Doppel Warrior a free two level 1 tokens when it's used as a Synchro Summon, it's also not a hard once per turn. It's not even a once per turn to that effect. And then of course we have Satellite Warrior. Now you could actually swap this out for a different card. I like running it personally because of how much Graveyard Revival we can do. And the fact that sometimes it does come up, it's a free extra tuner, and it can make itself a level 4, so that does combo off of a lot of other stuff in our deck. Like we've got a bunch of level 4s, we've got some level 2s, we've got some level 1s. So this thing can enable us from anywhere from 5 to 8. And then of course, we gotta have the Hand Traps, so there's 2 Ash Blossom. Like, never is there going to be a better hand trap than Ash Blossom, honestly. Like, it is honestly too good for its own good. And then moving on to the spell and traps, we actually have some pretty good stuff here. So as you can see, 3 Stardust Illuminate. This thing is a very good card. This is basically a Foolish Burial slash Emergency Teleport slash Level Eater for Stardust. Like, this card... I don't know how this didn't get a hit on the ban list, but honestly, I can see them being like, okay, yeah, no one's really playing Stardust, they're playing more Synchron, we'll just leave this as it is. But with how good this card is, I'm surprised that they didn't even, like, semi-limit it, because it's honestly not just good in Synchro or Stardust, it's good pretty much anywhere. So what it does, it is a, it's again, a Foolish Burial e teleport level leader. So when you have a Stardust or a Dragon-type Synchro Monster on your field, you can send one Stardust Monster from your deck to the graveyard, and you can special summon that if you have the Stardust or the Synchro that mentions Stardust on the field. Hence why I said it's a Foolish Burial slash e teleport. But you can also banish it to increase or reduce the level of any Stardust Monster you control by one until the end of the turn. And that's not specific. Like, it can be any Stardust monster. It can be Stardust Dragon. It can be Stardust Charge Warrior. It can be Stardust Synchron. Like, this thing is honestly just a very good spell card for Stardust and for kind of Synchro in general if you're running Stardust monsters. Now, of course, it is the only effect per... You can only use each effect once per turn. So it does have that limitation, which is probably why they didn't do anything to it. It honestly does work out very well, and it keeps itself balanced. But, like, this card is too good to not run in any Stardust build at 3. Like, you want to be seeing this pretty much all the time in your opening hand. And then, of course, we have 2 E-Teleport. Don't run this at 3 or 1. There's reasons you don't want to run this at more than 2. 3 ends up being super cloggy because there are way too many ways to get out Psy Reflector onto the field. So by the time you do that, you'll already have run out of targets for E-Teleport, meaning you kind of want to keep it at 2. And you also don't want to run it at 1 because you do still want to see it quite often. There are times when you want to see it just to save yourself a normal summon so that you can actually go into more plays later on in your turn. And then moving on to more Synchro-specific support, we've got 2 Synchro Chase. 
This basically acts as a recoverer for any material that we use for a Synchron Warrior or Stardust Synchro Summon, as long as that card is still in the graveyard. And it does also prevent our opponent from activating effects in response to our monsters with Warrior, Synchron, or Stardust in their name. So, pretty good, honestly. Like, having that act as something that protects our monsters' effects and gives us recovery material is pretty good. And then we have two more Dawn of Majesty spell cards that support Stardust, Arriving Miracle and Synchro Overtake. These cards are kind of really busted. So, Arriving Miracle. This is basically Majestic on Turbo. What this does is when it's activated, you can place a level 1 dragon from your hand or deck on the top of your deck, and then neither player can return Stardust Dragon or monsters that list it back into the extra deck. Gee, I wonder what they designed that thinking. Yeah, this thing is honestly just really good. And if a synchro monster is special summoned, except during the damage step, note how it doesn't say to your field. You can apply one of these effects, but you can't use the same one again twice in a turn. You can either draw a card, or special summon a tuner. Now this actually makes Converging Will Dragon live, because what you do is you put Converging Wills on top of your deck with Arriving Miracle, you Synchro Summon, use that effect to draw the Arriving Miracle Dragon, and place it on field, get your level 1 dragon, and then go into Majestics. And Synchro Overtake is basically a monster reincarnation for synchro monsters. So what it does is you can reveal a synchro monster in your extra deck with a specific requirement, and when I say specific requirement, it has to be like the name of a monster, it can't just be any type of monster. And you can reveal a monster in your deck or graveyard that has that name, and either add it to your hand, or special summon it from the extra deck. But you can't summon for the rest of the turn, except for Synchro Monsters. So it does work out really well for Synchro, it kind of locks you a bit, but as you can see from my extra deck, we're not worried about being locked into Synchros. Our entire extra deck is Synchro. We are Synchro. We were born in the Synchro. Now this is actually really good because it recovers Wish Converging, and I've had times where I've been like, hmm, I still have a normal summon and I can recover Wish Converging to get another Majestic on field, I'm just going to activate this card and pull this back. Cool, cool. This is on board now. And then for some generic support cards, we've got Fire Formation Tanky, Starlight Road, not Starlight Road, Starlight Junction. Same difference, only difference being this card is actually good. Uh, Starlight Junction is basically, oh, I have a tuner on field, but I don't want this tuner. I'm going to tribute that to get a different one. And during your opponent's turn, if you have this on field and you manage to Synchro Summon, you can shuffle a card on field back into the deck. Like, honestly, the second effect is really good, but you don't see it that much. You don't really see it enough for it to be like, okay, I'm going to use this, and this is going to come up very often. But it is still a good effect, honestly. It, it's honestly not worth passing up. It, it's at least worth giving it like a look into to see if you can run it. And then, of course, generic text, pretty much what you'd expect for a synchro deck. We've got the one, one for one. Foolish Burial, Pot of Avarice, Called by the Grave, and Monster Reborn. Really wish we'd gotten both Called by the Grave back at 2. Why, Konami? Why must you pain me so? And then moving on to traps, we actually only have three. Technically two, because one of them is at 2. So we've got the 2 Assault Mode Activate. You don't want this at 3. You really don't want this at 3. It's really better to just keep it at 2. Because most of the time, you're either going to be just getting one Assault Mode out, and just using that, or you're not even going to be getting Assault Mode out, and you're just going to be using this as discard fodder. So, yeah, that's a thing. But then we also have Majestic Mirage. This is a really good Stardust trap. If a face-up card you control leaves the field by your card effect, or to activate the effect of your card, and it was either Stardust or it mentioned Stardust, you can activate one of the following effects, but you can't use the same one again in the same turn. You can either special summon the monster you use to leave the field, banish a monster in your opponent's field or graveyard, not targeting, and you can have any damage that you take for the rest of the turn. So that card's really good. It does actually act as an out for a lot of stuff because this thing acts as an out for anything that you can't target. Like if you can't target, say, something like Dragoon, this just says, 
I see you have a big boss monster that I can't target. I also can't run over that. What if I just banish that from existence? And then moving into the extra deck, of course, it's your boy. We got three of your boy. Stardust Dragon, full power, just full three in the extra deck at all times. Like, I love Stardust Dragon so much, and just honestly such a good card, and I just love that the archetype is finally getting support, and that he's actually getting enough support to be good. Because for, mo for a good while, most of the legacy support that we got for the 5Ds era wasn't for Stardust. It was either for Resonators or Synchron specifically. Never for Stardust. Never specifically focused on the one monster in 5Ds that was probably the most popular. Now, I know people are going to argue with me on this next choice and be like, Oh, why are you running that? The other version's so much better. But I like running Shooting Quasar and there's a reason for that. So yes, I know Cosmic Blazar is technically the better version of Shooting Quasar, but let me explain why I like Quasar better. They have the same requirements. They are the same monsters aside from their attributes. Quasar is a light, uh, Blazar is a wind. They can both only be synchro summoned. Okay, fine, that's fair. The difference in their effects. Shooting Quasar can attack multiple times per battle phase because you're going to be needing to use two non-tuners to summon it, and it gets an additional attack for every non-tuner used to summon it. Blazar only gets one attack. Now, they both do have an Omni-Negate effect. However, this is where it differs. While Quasar's Omni-Negate lets it stay on board and destroy whatever it's negating, Blazar forces you to have to banish what you're using to negate, which is Blazar. And it does act as a Solemn. It can be a Solemn for any summon. However, you don't really need to negate the summon of something if you're negating the effects of that thing that summons itself in the first place. And yes, I'm aware that Cosmic Blazar actually does negate attacks, and end the battle phase a la Battle Fader. But here's the thing Cosmic Blazar has to banish itself off of the field in order to activate any of its effects. Now, here's the problem with that. Even if we were to have Majestic Mirage on board, that doesn't recover Cosmic Blazar because Cosmic Blazar does not mention Stardust Dragon. There is also no option for anything to do with this if it leaves the field not by your choice. However, Quasar does have an option to do when it leaves the field not by your choice. Or when it just leaves the field in general, actually, and it's face up, you can special summon a shooting star dragon from your extra deck. The reason that's so good is because shooting star not only acts as a destruction prevention, it is also still 3,300 attack points, so your opponent has some work to do if they want to run it over, and it can negate an attack once per turn by banishing itself until the end phase. And, key part of this, Shooting Star Dragon special summons itself when its effect is resolved at the end of the turn, meaning it can trigger Arriving Miracle. So, yes, if you're a fan of running Shooting Star, Quasar is, in my opinion, better. I can see how some people think that Blazar is also better because they're both only once per turn Omni Negates and Blazar just kind of has more options. But most of the time, if not all of the time, you're going to be using the negation effect and their negation effect only destroys whatever they're negating, which still leaves your opponent with access to it. We have a card that can negate and banish what it negates. Yes, indeed, Shooting Majestic is actually a very good monster that is kind of, but also kind of not, a lesser form of Quasar, but also a better form of Majestic Star. So it is basically the requirement of Majestic Dragon plus one or more non-tuner monsters, including a Dragon Synchro, Stardust Dragon, and it has to first be Synchro Summoned, meaning it can be Special Summoned by other ways, if it's properly summoned first. And once per turn, you can negate the effects of one effect monster your opponent controls. So any monster your opponent controls, your turn, this thing just acts as an effect failure. And it also gets an additional attack per battle phase for every Stardust Dragon 
or monster that is a synchro that lists Stardust Dragon in your graveyard. This thing is getting at least two attacks extra during its first turn. Because more often than not, you're going to be getting two Stardust Dragons in the graveyard first turn, meaning this thing can attack up to three times. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. Not to mention the, of course, Omni Negate of when a Carter effect is activated, you can banish this, negate that effect, and then banish that card, meaning your opponent no longer has access to it. If it's destroyed, okay, they can still play it. This? This says no to that card. This says, you want this in the game? You want this in circulation? No. Goodbye! And of course, it is easily more turbo than Quasar or Blazar. Like, you can pretty much almost instantly get this card on the field. Like, Arriving Miracle just makes this thing so easy to access. Like, it is pretty much always going to be a first turn, if not a first turn additional to, like, three other boss monsters. And then, of course, we have its less powerful predecessor, Majestic Star Dragon. This thing is actually optimal sometimes. Sometimes you want to save your level additionals for other stuff, just so that you can use it to get better materials on board. So sometimes just using Majestic Dragon plus Stardust in the 1 level 1 is actually more optimal. Plus, Majestic Star acts as an Omni Negate and a board wipe for your opponent. Like, if you can save this for long enough to where your opponent doesn't get rid of it, and they manage to set up a board that you can end up negating. And not only negating, but just straight up wiping out of existence. Yeah, that's a card worth running, honestly. And it does also have the effect of negating a monster's effect, just like shooting Majestic. But it also has the effect of, during the end phase, you have to target a Stardust in your graveyard, reveal it, and put this back in the extra deck. But that is actually solved by Arriving Miracle, because you don't have to do that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we are running Shooting Star Dragon. Cue the Clear Mind music. But yeah, this thing is honestly just really good, considering we have so many tuners in our deck. So it's basically a level 10 Dragon Synchro. It takes one tuner Synchro monster and Stardust Dragon. We've got plenty of materials to make that happen. And it gets the effect of you can excavate the top five cards of your deck, shuffle them back in, and then as many monsters as were revealed that were tuners, this gets maximum number of tags. So, say you use this effect and you got two tuners. This thing can now attack twice. And keep in mind, it's a 3,300. That's going to be running over a lot. Like, that runs over Blue Eyes, that runs over Hope Harbinger, that runs over Dragoon. That just runs over a lot of stuff. And like I said, it does have the negate a destruction effect. And it also destroys the card that it negates. And if a monster would declare an attack from your opponent, you can target the attacking monster, banish this card, and negate that attack. And then during the next end phase, after you use this effect, you can special summon Shooting Star. Again, that triggers Arriving Miracle. Arriving Miracle triggers off of any synchro monster being special summoned. Meaning, Shooting Star's effect gives us extra draw power. And then for the tech cards for this deck, because there are actually a lot of tech synchro monsters. First off, I gotta talk about Sightframe Lord Omega. This thing is so good for this deck. It does so many things. So, Sightframe Lord Omega is a level 8 generic psychic synchro monster. And once per turn, during the main phase, you can banish this face-up card from the field and one card from your opponent's hand until your next standby phase. So it's basically just a free hand rip, and you immediately get that card back. Like, honestly, Cyframe Lord Omega is really good and kind of deserves the limit to one that it's at. And it also does have the added effect of during your opponent's standby phase, you can target one banished card and return it to the graveyards. And if it's in the graveyard, it does have its recovery effect of targeting one other card in the graveyard. Note, again, doesn't have to be your card and you can shuffle them both into the deck. So, this thing just has a lot of ways that it can be just pure interruption, but it is also recovery since a lot of monsters in our deck do end up banishing themselves once they kind of use their effects. And then, we also do have Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. I've actually had some duels where I use this to put my opponent into killing range. Like, I've had some times where I've been like, my opponent has a full board, but no negates. 
And I have this thing that I can use to just wipe their board and deal them damage. Now the interesting thing about Scarlet, Red Dragon, Archfiend is it says monsters with equal to or less than attack. Stardust Dragon Assault Mode has the same amount of attack than it, meaning if you were to destroy Stardust Dragon Assault Mode, not only would you be getting an extra 500 damage to your opponent, you would also be able to actually use that to special summon Stardust back from your graveyard. So that's a really interesting attack there. I really do like the way that works out, and sometimes that actually does end up giving you the thing that you need to run over your opponent with. And then of course we've got Cyber's Quantum. This is basically here for anything we can't target, because when it attacks anything, or if it battles anything, uh, you can return that monster to the hand, and then this thing gets a second attack. Doesn't target, doesn't say you have to have a Link monster on board, it just is generically, okay, I want to get whatever you have on board back into your hand so that I don't have to deal with that. And then we do have Stardust Charge Warrior and TG Hyper Librarian, basically our draw power cards for the deck that Stardust Charge Warrior gives us a free draw on summon, and TG gives us a free draw for whenever we synchro summon or whenever our opponent synchro summons, because again, TG Hyper doesn't say specifically your synchro monsters. And then for the Synchro Tuners, we of course have Excel Synchron and Formula Synchron. The two boys that just do absolutely amazing work when it comes to making bigger Synchro monsters. And that does it for the main deck and extra deck. Like, honestly, even already at that, the deck runs very well. Like, there's not really a lot of options where you're like, okay, I need this card instead of this card. This card didn't work out, I'm going to put this in. But, if you ever feel like you need to do that, we've got some side tech options. So, of course, first off, we've got the replacement for Ash Blossom in Ghost Bell. Now, Ghost Bell is pretty much here just because there are so many graveyard decks nowadays, and there's actually some graveyard decks that are actually coming back into circulation, that it's like, okay, yeah, we don't really want to see that deck perform well, so I'm going to run this card to keep that in check. Now, you are running three of this because a, you could take out something like Starlight Junction and put the extra hand trap in if you so chose. It's not really necessary to run Starlight Junction. In fact, there's a few cards in this that you could just be like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to use that that much. So I'm going to just slot in another hand trap, which is also why we have the extra Ash Blossom in the side deck. That basically, if you want to, there are options to take out to put in a third hand trap. But speaking of hand traps, we are also running King of the Sky Prison. You could substitute this for Nibiru, they honestly kind of do the same thing, but this one kind of also acts as a Foolish Burial Goods. So, during your main phase, you can reveal this card from your hand until the end of your opponent's next turn. And while this card is revealed, set cards on the field can't be destroyed by card effects. This includes monsters. And if a spell or trap that's set is activated, except during the damage step, you can special summon this from your hand. Then, if you activate this effect while you had it revealed, you can take a spell or trap from your deck and directly set it, but it has to be banished during the end phase of the next turn. This thing is actually really good, honestly. I can see why it is as expensive as it is, aside from being just a single print secret rare. Because this thing's effect is a little broken. It is basically just a free Nibiru slash Foolish Bear of Goods slash Trap Trick. And then moving on to more tech support cards, we've got three Dark Ruler No More. This is kind of here in place of your hand traps that if you're like, okay, I want to go second and I want to just let my opponent pop off so that I can do this, negate their entire board, and then just run it over. And Dark Ruler is also non-responsible. Your opponent can't target it like they can with Ash Blossom or Ghost Bell, so we do actually have pretty decent ways to shut off our opponent if we do so choose. And then we're also running Miracle Synchro Fusion. Now, the reason we're running this is because we've got Dragon Knight Draco Equest. I know it's not the most optimal play, but I do love Dragon Knight Draco Equest. I think it is actually a very cool card, and I love Miracle Synchro Fusion just as a card in general. Now, this card not only acts as a fusion by banishing the materials on a fusion monster mentioning Synchro from your field or graveyard, but it also acts as a draw if it's set and your opponent destroys it. 
So it is really good just as that extra generic support. Like if you want to do anything else not involving Synchro or you just want to get something out that's a bigger body than 3000, you have an option to do that. And Dragonite Draco Equist, I honestly really love because it can steal the effect of any dragon synchro monster in your graveyard by banishing it. And it takes that monster's name. So that actually becomes really good. I honestly really love that. And it also does have the added bonus of while it's in attack position, any effect damage you take is just negated and given to your opponent instead. So that's actually really good. I really love that effect. I actually really want to one day go up against a Trickstar player in a match and then turn to, or not turn to, uh, round to side this in, specifically that I can be like, okay, you're going to inflict damage to me, what if I give you that damage back? Here you go, enjoy, have some fun. And then for the Synchro support, again, we've got Cosmic Blazar, you can run it if you choose and take out Shooting Star for any other material. I like the Quasar Shooting Star Engine more specifically because, again, they are technically better in certain circumstances, and they do kind of combo off of each other, as well as acting as Stardust monsters, technically, which this deck really tries to support. It tries to benefit every Stardust monster it can. And then we do also have Ching Ying, the Supreme Sovereign Sword Soul. This thing is honestly very good. It's just a generic level 10 synchro. Like, for each banished card, this thing gains 100 attack and defense, and monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense. We have a lot of cards in this deck that are going to banish themselves, meaning this thing is going to get at least 200 extra attack and make your opponent's monsters weaker by 200 attack. And if it would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish a card from your graveyard instead. Pretty good. But if a card is banished, except during the damage step, you can banish one card from both your opponent's field and their graveyard. That's pretty good removal, honestly. Like, that is very good, especially considering the fact that, again, it doesn't say target. And then we've also got Baron de Fleur. This basically is the same thing as Sword Soul, a generic level 10 synchro that is good for just using as a gate. I feel like whoever was making Fleur felt like they needed a boss monster. Like, I feel like they were like, Hmm, yes, machine tuners that want to get out big, big plant synchro or wind warrior synchro monsters. How do we make them have a boss monster? Why don't we just give them something in Omni Negates? Brilliant! So, once per turn, you can target one face-up card on the field. Or, no, actually, I take that back. It says you can target any card on the field. It doesn't even have to be face-up. And then it just pops it. And once while this card is face up on the field, when a card or effect is activated, you can negate that effect and destroy that card. But you can only use that effect of Baron de Fleur once per turn. That effect is really restricted. Like, that is shut down a lot. I feel like the once per turn would have been enough, honestly. But the once while face up on the field is kind of understandable, given how strong it is just as a base, being 3000 attack and 2400 defense and just being able to omni-negate literally anything and omni-pop anything. And it also has an effect of once per turn during a standby phase, you can target a level 9 or lower monster in your graveyard, put this back in the extra deck, and then special summon that monster. That gives us access to pretty much anything in our graveyard, and that is just free extender for pretty much any play. Like, there's no reason to not say, that boy good. And then, of course, just as extra negate options, we do have Crystal Wing, Synchro Dragon, and F.A. Dawn Dragster. You guys know what these guys do. They're basically just monster and spell negates, respectively, and they are very good at what they do. And that is actually it for the deck, honestly. Like, it runs very well for what it is. I'm actually very astonished that it can actually keep toe-to-toe -to -toe with bigger Synchro decks like Virtual World, Pure Synchron, and... I know some people are going to ask this, but the reason why I'm not running a Synchron engine is because Junk Speeder is so easily shut down and it doesn't get protection from any of our cards. No card in our thing is protecting Junk Speeder, meaning if that thing gets Ash Blossomed, you now have a white brick sitting on your board. 
Now, I do actually want to show you guys some test hands, because there are a couple of interesting things that you can do with this deck. So let's say just to get over there, shall we? So as you can see, I've got quite a bit of test hands with Stardust. This is actually less than what I had previously. I actually had to go through and get rid of some tests, because some of them were from older versions of the deck that had like one or two cards substituted in that I didn't run anymore. But it still does amazing things. So first off, let's start out with Miracle of Stardust. This is basically a method of getting out the Dragon Knight Draco Equist. Now I do have to say, this is more meant to get it out turn two. This is not meant to get out the Equist turn one. The reason for that is because there's ways to use this hand that can actually get you more Synchro Monsters and make it more viable to save the Miracle Synchro Fusion for later. So as you can see, we've got the Boost Warrior, we've got the Stardust Xiao Long, we've got the E-Teleport, we've got the Illumination, and we've got the Miracle Synchro Fusion. Xiao Long is pretty much always going to be discard fodder. You're never going to really see the need to normal summon this, because there's so many ways that you can actually just get it onto the field by the graveyard that it's better to just put it in there as soon as possible. So the first step we're going to go is we're going to go with the Assault Mode combo of E-Teleport using Cyreflector. Cyreflector gets to search us Beast, who adds Activate to our hand, and then that gives us our free level 8 Dragon Synchro, i.e. Stardust Dragon. And then because we have Stardust Dragon, Illuminate is now live, giving us free access to Special Summoning Stardust Synchron. Now, because we have Stardust Synchron and we have Boost Warrior, we actually have access to TG Hyper Librarian, which is really good because that means we're just going to be fueling our draws further and further. Now, there is another thing that happens with TG Hyper. TG Hyper can actually really influence the way you play your combo. And the way it does that is in the cards that it draws. So, depending on what TG draws, you can either continue to set up your board and go for massive plays and just OTK, or you can choose to set up defensively and get stuff like hand traps, called by the grave, infinite impermanence if you choose to run it, and you can just set all that up and be like, okay, I'm ready, come at me, bro. So we are actually going to use the Synchron to search out the right miracle, just because that also gives us access to more Synchro summons. And you can see we're going to go into TG, which triggers the Arriving Miracle, meaning we get the Wish Converging and Brotar, which allows us to discard Jell Long to add a trail. Now here's the thing about Brotar. Here is the thing about Brotar. A lot of times, you're not going to be using it specifically for the Synchro Summon. You're going to be tributing it to use other monsters for Synchro Summon. Now the reason I say this is because it's a level 1 dragon. Stardust Trail can give you the same material, and more often than not, you're going to have Synchron in your grave and Trail in your hand if you have Brotar on the field, meaning that you basically have a free extra level 8 Synchro monster. So as you can see, we go for that play, we get these boys out, and then we get our extra token, but we also get the Zhao Long, because of Stardust Dragon being Synchro Summon. So as you can see, we now go for the Shooting Majestic, TG gets us that extra draw, and then we just set Assault Mode Activate and Miracle Synchro Fusion to prepare for the next turn. Now this is actually really good. This is pretty good for the fact that, one, we have a distraction. Shooting Majestic is going to add as a distraction for anything our opponent tries to do, because more often than not, Say they have something like a kaiju or four ridden droplets, they're going to try and negate this. This is going to be their main focus, meaning they're not going to be worried about the assault mode activate. So we can then use the assault mode activate when they least expect it to summon out Stardust Dragon Assault Mode from our deck and get him onto the field. And in this actual test hand, we are going to be doing that. Now again. The reason I didn't go for Miracle Synchro Fusion right off the bat is because this actually gives us more materials. So as you can see, now it is our second turn, assuming we have no interruptions and we actually get to keep Miracle Synchro Fusion on board, that gives us free access to our fusion. And it is actually the first thing that we can manage to do 
And because of that, we aren't going to be restricted by any of our monsters saying, oh, you can't do anything but synchro summon for the rest of the turn. So we use that, we get out Dragonite Draco Equist in the extra monster zone, and then because we drew Sentinel, we actually get access to another Cyber Reflector, meaning we do get access to another level 8 Synchro. And of course, we go for the Sign Prey Lone Omega, we're getting our draws off of our cards, and then that is our end board for that. Now, this can end in a number of ways. So, like I said, if our opponent manages to send this to the grave or stop it, we have Stardust Dragon Assault Mode. So, even if they stop our one Omni Negate, we have access to another Omni Negate. Why else is this good? Well, Stardust Dragon Assault Mode has its destruction effect, meaning if our opponent tries to destroy this card during their turn, we then get access to Stardust Dragon, which is going to give us even more draw power. And again, we have Miracle Synchro Fusion set. And Miracle Synchro Fusion, as a set card, acts as either a free upstart goblin if they choose to take the bait and destroy it, or it gives us Dragonite Draco Equist. And again, like I mentioned during the deck profile part of this, if this card banishes, say, Shooting Majestic, then it steals its effects, meaning this thing can attack as many times as the number of Stardust Dragons in your graveyard, and it just gets to be an absolute boss when it comes to negating. So like I said, TG does end up influencing your play, so you can either play offensively or you can play defensively. Now, there are also going to be a lot of hands where you simply get stuff to go along with Shooting Majestic. That Shooting Majestic is actually going to be your main card to try and get on the field first turn, either that or Majestic Star. But more often than not, you're also going to be getting materials that just let you combo off. So as you can see, we got pretty much what we need to get ourselves set up that we can put Jialong into the grave. We have E-Teleport for the immediate access into Reflector. Now the reason we used E-Teleport immediately and didn't Normal Summon is because Arrive in Miracle will let us Special Summon Psy Reflector later on in the turn. So you can see we go for the Assault combo, we get out Stardust Dragon, and then that gives us access to Zhao Long, who comes back. Then we get Stardust Synchron, giving us access to our TG and our Arrive in Miracle. And then we just bada bing, bada boom, bing bang, bop, big boys. So there goes the wish conversion combo. That gives us our actual out into trail. And the reason I discarded assault mode activate is because you're not always going to be getting assault mode on board. There are actually times when you legitimately just use assault mode activate as discard fodder. And that's the more optimal solution. So as you can see, again, we're going for that combo, we special summon Boost Warrior, giving us our free level 1, and then we can use Illuminate to increase Stardust Dragon's level, and give us that free access to Cyframe Lord Omega and TG Hyper. Now, there's a way you can go about this. You can either A, keep TG Hyper on board and save it for in case your opponent tries to synchro summon, or you can use Arriving Miracle to special summon the Reflector that's in your hand, and Synchro Summon into Stardust Charge Warrior for that extra draw power. Now, really, depending on what you want, it's either or. If you want to go first, then you're going to use TG Hyper to just have it set up and be like, okay, this is here now, I'm going to get power off of Synchros, I'm going to set this here and just leave it. But if you're going second and your opponent has a bunch of special summon monsters on the board, you could go with something like Stardust Charge Warrior and just be like, okay, I'm going to use this, and I'm just going to become like an instant special summon monster remover. Now, as you can see, this deck also actually does have plenty of ways to get out Quasar. Like, there's plenty of ways to get out Quasar, but there's also ways that we can get out two Majestics in one turn. So these kinds of combos are where the deck gets kind of restrictive in what you can have in your hand, that there is some stuff that you kind of have to be like, okay, I need this specific card to make this combo work. Now, this is one of those hands where their cards can be interchangeable, but you do still need some variation of those cards. So, in this case, those cards are Stardust Zhao Long and One for One. You can either have this as Foolish Burial and E-Teleport, Foolish Burial and the Psy Reflector, or Foolish Burial and any card that wants you to get Psy Reflector on the board, but you need ways to get these two cards and Psy Reflector set up. 
you need to have Stardust Shao Wong and Reflector set up for that combo to actually play efficiently. So as you can see, what we go for here is we get the Reflector, that gives us access to our Beast, and then we're actually going to be using Synchro Chase, and that gives us free material to use for later on Synchro Summons. So as you can see right here, we get the Beast back, we get the Zhao Long back, and then that actually gives us our access to Tel- or not Teleport, Illumination, which gives us access to the Wish Converging Arriving Miracle combo, and then that lets us discard the Assault Mode Activate, give us our free Stardust Trail. You can see we go for Omega first, actually, to get that set up. And then we go for Shooting Majestic first turn. Or no, we go for Majestic Star first. And then we go for this whole combo here. So we get the two monsters back. And then we have Synchro Overtake in our hand. Now what's interesting about this combo is it doesn't require you to Normal Summon once to get this set up. Meaning that if you can get this put on board, then you can still use a normal summon. And that can be pretty much anything you want. It could be, oh, say, Formula Synchro. You could go for Shooting Star instead of Shooting Majestic Star. Or it could be literally anything else. But it gives you a free normal summon still. Like, you've not used your normal summon yet, meaning you can use Synchro Overtake to recover Wish Conversion and normal summon it, giving you access to both Majestic monsters in your extra deck. Pretty good, right? I mean, the fact that you can get two Majestic monsters on board and have that kind of negation, yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. I would honestly say that is a very good setup. So now, let's get into a couple of ways that this can actually go into Quasar Dragon. Now, one of the really easiest ways to get Quasar actually ends up giving you Shooting Majestic as well, because the way you get Quasar does actually involve Arriving Miracle, and as a side effect of Arriving Miracle, you do get access to a Majestic Monster. It can be Shooting Majestic, it can be Majestic Star, but it does give you access to that extra monster. Now, the problem with these kinds of hands is they are very restrictive. They do need to be a very specific set of cards for these combos to actually play off well. So you can see we've got the Fire Formation Tanky. We do actually need it to be either Tanky or something that immediately turbos out Psy Reflector. If it is actually something that just gets Psy Reflector out without using our normal summon, that's great because that saves us Monster Reborn, which we can use later on in the turn. But as you can see, since we got Tanky, we can Tribute Sentinel, get out Reflector, go for that combo, and then because we revive something from Graveyard, Doppel Warrior Spectral Trigger, meaning we get that free level 2 to use for Synchro Summons. So you can see, we go for the Stardust Dragon, and then we activate Illuminate to get Stardust Synchron. Now, we're going to search Stardust Synchron Arriving Miracle, but we're not going to use it immediately. There's a problem with using Arriving Miracle immediately. For Arriving Miracle to actually get Wish Converging's effect to go off, it has to be the last thing in the chain to resolve. Meaning, if you use anything that draws before that, or after that in the chain, and you've already activated Arriving Miracle's effect to draw a card, then you've interrupted your chain and you've missed timing on Wish Converging. So you can't use it then off of its draw effect. So we actually want to save the Arriving Light for a small bit of time, just enough to give us these free tokens. So we get the two tokens, Stardust Charge Warriors on board now, that gives us an extra draw, and we are actually going to be using Monster Reborn to revive the Stardust Synchron that we already used. Now, here's the other thing. Because we have Stardust Synchron in our hand, that can special summon off of a Riding Miracle. Meaning that once we go into the Synchro Summon for TG, that gives us a free special summon, and we can save the draw effect for next turn off of TG, and we'll still have the draw from Arriving Miracle. So as you can see, that combo plays out. We get those draws to go off. We get Excel Synchron, which actually works out really well, because with Excel Synchron, we don't actually have to use Illuminate because it can reduce its level to 1. So we use that. We go into the addition of Stardust Trail. We send a Stardust Synchron, 
And the funny thing is, we didn't actually use start a synchronous effect at all. So if we had had anything that we could have normal summoned, we could have used start a synchron to tribute itself, or to tribute the card that we normal summon, summon it back, get the trail, and then get another synchro summon. But as you can see, now we have the shooting majestic, we have our level 6, level 5, and level 1, and that's just going to set us up for our big synchro summons. And as you can see, we're getting extra draws, and out comes shooting quasar dragon. Like I said, it's not terribly difficult to get this on board, but to get this and something else on board to actually benefit you, that's where the hands really get restrictive. That's where you do have to draw into that perfect hand, no interruption, no blocks, no hand traps, and just go full combo. And again, like I said, there are hands where, because you're going for Quasar, you get other monsters as a sheer side effect. Because with Stardust Synchron existing the way it does, you will pretty much always get access to a Majestic monster as a side effect of using it. So you can see here, we actually go for the Assault combo first. That goes off, we get the Doppel effect, and then we actually activate Synchro Chase here. It doesn't need to be activated here, I kind of just clicked a little early. What you want to do is you want to activate it before you summon Charge Warrior. And then you go into this whole combo, get the Arriving Light, go for the Charge Warrior, revive Stardust Synchron, get Doppel's effect, and then you get the setup for your tokens. And then you can see as well, we've got the free level 5 here. We've got Formula Synchron set up in hand. Now, the thing about Fire Formation Tenki, that was a draw off of Arriving Miracle. The Tenki that we drew can be literally any other card in our deck. It does not matter. This could be Stardust Down Long, it could be Trail, it could be an extra E Teleport. It does not matter. If it's any card that can be discarded that isn't crucial to a later play, it is a card that is good to draw. So as you can see, we're going to end up going for the TG Hyper here, getting that Majestic set up. And then we are actually going to immediately go for the Majestic Star, and we're going to actually get the search of the trail off of that. And then you can see we get the Synchro Summon, we get the draw, we get the free summon of Psy Reflector. Now by tributing the remaining Doppel token, we actually get access to Stardust Synchro on Stardust Trail, which gives us our free out into another level 8 Synchro. So we're actually going to go for Stardust Dragon here because we have the Assault Mode in hand that we can use. And then using that Trail token, we could go into Formula Synchron, and now we can use Stardust Illuminate to reduce Charge Warrior's level to 5 and Synchro Summon Shooting Quasar. And then because we actually managed to draw Synchro Overtake on a lucky basis, we get to summon, or not summon, we get to add Wish Converging back to our hand. Pretty good option, not gonna lie, but pretty good choice of actually being able to do that. And then as you can see, again, that's just a full board setup, that we have Majestic Stars or Omni Negate Board Wipe, we've got Quasar as our free Omni Negate and option to go into Shooting Star Dragon, we've got Stardust acting as bait to be prepared for the Stardust Dragon Assault Mode. This board just sets up a whole bunch of stuff with the side effect of going for Shooting Quasar Dragon. And that really is the way a lot of plays with this deck kind of work. If you can map out the roadmap of where you want to go from your hand, you can actually set up up to three or four monsters in your first turn. And of course, I do actually have some replays here to show you guys, because this deck has actually performed very admirably. So the first one that I'm really proud of is a match where I had to fight Kaiju Dark Magicians. Now, this guy was actually really good. I'm not going to lie. This guy had a very good deck set up. So what it was was basically Stardust trying to fight Kaijus mixed into Dark Magicians. So you can probably guess where that goes. Our opponent has a lot of stuff they want to use to stop us from doing stuff. They can banish stuff on our field. They can get rid of big boss monsters we set up. But it doesn't matter because Stardust just goes burr. So you can see here he's got a pretty good opening hand. He's got Magician's Soul and a Kaiju already in his hand. So that's very good. Plus the free MST. So you know. MST, do be doing MST things. You can see I'm going here for the Assault Mode combo. Unfortunately, I drew Assault Mode in my opening hand, so that wasn't great. But 
I do actually get access to Stardust Synchron via the Starlight Junction, meaning we can actually go into the Majestic plus the Cyframe Lord Omega, and because of that, we have no qualms about putting Stardust Dragon Assault Mode in our graveyard, because we can then put it back in our deck to use for later. So as you can see, we get this board set up, our opponent kind of wipes us out here a little bit. He draws into a second Magician's Soul. Like, that's pretty lucky, not gonna lie. Uh, Omega manages to hit one of the Magician's Souls. Very good call. We're left with a Kaiju. He can use Dark Magical Circle later to get rid of said Kaiju. And then our board's empty. But unfortunately for him, Omega comes back. So Omega hits the field again, we get that. We actually draw into the Tanky, which is really good, because that gives us combos for Trail to actually play off of. So Sentinel tributes itself, gets the Sign Reflector out, summons it, gets the free revival of the Assault Sentinel. Stardust Trail actually gets to tribute Omega, and the reason we tribute Omega is, again, to put Stardust Dragon Assault Mode back into our deck. And then we can, of course, go for our big boy Stardust. We go for the Illuminate, get out another Stardust Synchron, and here we actually go for the Shooting Quasar. Now let me back up a bit so I can show you where this actually goes. So you can see we've got the token off of Trail. We've got the Stardust Synchron that we summoned off of Illuminate. And we've got Psy Reflector. Now we used Psy Reflector to bring back Beast as a level 5. The reason we brought it back as a level 5 is because that gives us free access into Stardust Charge Warrior. And because I knew I was going to get the token, I knew I could set up TG Hyper Librarian, and then I could use that to basically go full combo extend. So as you can see here, I get the TG, I get the charge, draw power goes off. I actually use Synchro Chase here to revive Psy Reflector, and we have Monster Reborn. So Monster Reborn gives us access to any level 1 in our graveyard, meaning that we can get anything out, or, better yet, we can go for Excel Synchron to save ourselves to start us to illuminate. And because we're actually decreasing the level, we get Shooting Quasar on our field. And again, Quasar gets three attacks, so that's going to work out very well. And then we also have Assault Mode Activate in our hand, meaning at the end of the turn, we can set that and have it prepared to use Stardust as our Omni Negate then. So as you can see, we wipe our opponent's board, Stardust attacks, and we just get that whole setup. Now, I didn't actually set the Assault Mode Activate. This was a weird call on my part. I actually don't remember why I did this. I think it was just because of the sole fact that I wanted to keep Stardust Dragon on board to use its effective special summoning. But you can see he tries to wipe it out with Dark Magician. Brotar comes in, saves us from that, gives us an extra search, and we actually manage to get some pretty decent stuff out. That he goes for Dark Magical Circle, gets Navigation and Eternal Soul, Unfortunately, his Dark Magic Circle is going to get immediately negated by Quasar, so he does kind of have to deal with that, and then he doesn't really have anything to remove our board. Now, in truth, I could have just attacked over the Magician's Rod and just won. My, I could have legitimately just done that. But I wanted to kind of flex a bit. So as you can see, we use Omega to actually recover our Excel Synchron, and this is actually going to let us go into shooting Star Dragon, because we get the free access to our... Stardust Dragon with a level 4s, then we get that, Zhao Long activates, bring itself back, we get a token, and then we do actually get access to anything that we want. So we see we get the actual uh, Synchro Chase. Now unfortunately we didn't get access to any good way to get Stardust Synchron back on board, so we did have to use an Ash Blossom to summon Shooting Star Dragon. But fortunately enough, Ash Blossom was actually poor perfectly in place for that. Like, that worked out amazingly. And then of course we get the extra attacks with shooting a star, and we just are able to wipe our opponent's board completely at that point. So as you can see, like, even through interruptions, even through stuff that kind of tries to get rid of your big boys, Stardust still has ways to get around that and actually bounce back pretty efficiently. And then this is actually a kind of duel where I managed to use the effect of Scarlight to its maximum potential. So you can see we got our opponent here setting up Light Swarms. He actually gets pretty good cards in his hand, not gonna lie. Like, this guy manages to set up really well and just basically get his entire combo extend onto the field. And we'll see later he actually does manage to go into Dante and Minerva, which is really good for Light Swarms, but he also gets Abyss Dweller. 
Now, Abyss Duel is pretty good. Abyss Dweller does kind of throw a wrench into this deck because any Grave Artifact doesn't get to activate. But the reason that doesn't really matter is because we can just instantly get what we need onto the field without even having to interact from the graveyard. <clears throat> Apologies, voice go burr. So as you can see, we go for the reflector combo almost immediately. We get this whole setup going. And once we do that, we activate Synchro Chase to revive our level four, giving us access to our other level four. So as you can see here, we've got everything set up. We've got the Arrive in Light, the Wish Conversion is already set up, Bing Bang Boom Draw, and then we go straight into Majestic Star Dragon. Now, here's the funny part. Uh, if we take a look at this, if we, if we just take a quick look at this, our only other monster in our field has 800 more attack points than Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. Every single one of our opponent's monsters, however, is weaker. Meaning that is actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 2,500 points of damage in addition to the 2,400 they've already taken. Meaning we can just instantly wipe them out. So like I said, as you can see, Scarlight actually does manage to put you in a position where you do just get free access to wipe your opponent's board and basically just go for the OTK. Now, this was another duel that I actually really liked. This guy's on EDL a lot. Like, shoutouts to this guy. This guy is a good duelist. So, this was me versus I Am Abundant when he was playing Dark Lords. So, as you can see, he's got a pretty good hand set up. He's got the Dark Lord Christia, he's got the Dark Lord Excel, and he's got the Dark Lord Superbia. I don't have that great a hand. I only have, like, some good support, barely really anything great, but I can still make it work. So, as you can see, we go for the Reflector, that whole combo plays off. But we are actually going to use the junction and send trail to the grave, and then we are going to tribute via junction and actually get what we want to. So you can see here the reflector combo is going to go off, but we're going to actually tribute our reflector via the start of synchron, and then that is going to give us access to our free level 8 synchro. And then, of course, because we use start of synchron, we do get access to the wish converging. That whole combo plays off, giving us Shooting Majestic. And then Brotar gives us the access to the free Light Dragon. And then we are kind of left with the level 6 Assault Beast. I kind of just brought this out just because it's there, it's an extra body, it works. And we can actually just use it to kind of save our lives for a small bit, just a tiny little bit, tiny little bit of time. And then he actually manages to give us the Dark Lord Delight. Bit of an issue. Bit of an issue. Kind of didn't want that on my field. And then as you can see, he just continues to set up. His board just goes. Like, it just pops off. And then you can see, he gets the Arc Lord Christia. Now, here's the thing about Arc Lord Christia. It prevented any special summoning. However, Shooting Majestic Star's effect doesn't special summon it to revive itself. It just returns it to the field. So we end up do actually getting our big boy boss monster back onto the field, and he does manage to clear all the monsters we have. However, again, we get our big boy. Like, that is the best possible outcome we can actually hope for. And then we just proceed to run over a lot of the monsters. Now, unfortunately, he does get access to his effects, so I am forced to negate it and banish it. And then you can see I set the trail. The reason I set the trail is actually because of the sole fact that trail works good as both graveyard fodder and a defensive monster. So you can see here, he gets another Arc Lord Christia, he tries to go for that combo, I banish his Condemned Dark Lord to prevent him from actually popping off with that, and he gets Dark Lord Morningstar. This thing kind of threw a wrench into things. However, I do get access to Brotar, so Brotar do goo, and then what I can do here is I can use the effect of Foolish Burial to send Synchron, and because I drew Doppel Warrior, that's going to give me access to free Synchro Plays. So you can see, I get this boy on board, he gets the search, Doppel comes to the field, and then we get Illuminate. And then it's all uphill from here. So you can see, we get the two tokens, we get the draws, we just basically get to set up every and anything we want. We get the extra start of Synchron, that gives us Excel Synchron, and then the chase gives us back our Stardust to get TG Hyperlight Brarian.
And now we actually did get to use Excel Synchron's effect to send Satellite Synchron. This is the other reason I use Satellite Synchron, is because it can actually make Excel Synchron's level reduce to 3, which in certain cases can give you access to Shooting Star if you can't get another level 1 on board. So you can see here we actually used the Illuminate to reduce Charge Warrior's level by 1 and get Stardust on board, and then because we got Stardust we managed to get the Stardust Zhao Long, meaning that we could go into Formula to go into Shooting Star. So you can see we get the extra draws off of all that summoning, and we actually draw into Majestic Mirage. This card is actually a really good thing that we drew into because it gives us combos for our plays later on. So as you can see, Shooting Star gets to attack once, he gets the prevention from its destruction, and then we just get to completely wipe out his life points. Like, the fact that I was kind of on the fence that entire duel until that point is very good. Like, I was kind of on the back burner just trying to figure out, okay, how do I survive this? Not how do I win, how do I survive? What do I do to actually make this combo work? And that is actually one of the great things about the deck, is you don't have to stick to your specific combo. Even if a combo gets interrupted, or something gets negated, or say your board gets wiped, the deck has ways to revive itself so that it can actually come back better and stronger than ever. But with that, I'm going to leave the deck profile here. Yeah, pretty good. I actually really like that this deck has become as efficient as it has. And I do like that Stardust is actually getting dedicated support to it, that it's not just Synchrons or generic Synchro summoning in general. And we are actually also getting more Stardust support later on with that value book that's coming out in 2022. Uh, if you want to know what that is, go check out YGO Organization. But with that, I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do intend to get a little bit more content out soon. I just haven't really had the time as of late to actually do that. Stuff just keeps popping up in the way, and I keep getting distracted, and I keep having to deal with stuff just here, there, everywhere, just popping up in my face. But I do intend to get some more content out. Yes, some of that being Soul Silver. I know some of you aren't surprised, but we do do really like that series. I really like the series. I know people who watch the channel really like it because it actually does still perform decently. It's actually among the tops of my current averages right now. And I do know that you guys just enjoy seeing me play Pokemon, seeing me cry horribly inside whenever a Pokemon dies. So uh, yeah, that's going to be fun, especially since we have Lugia coming up. Oh boy! But again, with that, I'm going to leave the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can slap the like button as always, and I will see all you beautiful people in the next video.